In this video, you'll learn how to test pickups using a magnetometer, an LCR meter, and a USB oscilloscope. The metrics we'll be analyzing are gauss, inductance, capacitance, DC resistance, and the resonant frequency and peak. Check the description box of this video for links to resources written by the people I learned these methods from, which dive deep into what these measurements mean. The magnetometer I use is a WT-10A. It measures in milliteslas, which are one-tenth of one gauss. With the whole side of the probe facing up, place it over the center of the pole pieces. Gauss is not a critical measurement, so estimating an average is fine. This pickup is measuring about 1,000 gauss and is north top polarity. For the LCR meter, I use a DE5000. Power the unit on and attach the alligator clips to the pickup leads. The three buttons you'll use are LCR Auto, Series Parallel, and Frequency. LCR Auto toggles between Auto LCR, L for inductance, C for capacitance, R for AC resistance, and DCR for DC resistance. Auto LCR and R modes are not needed here. Series parallel toggles between series and parallel on the various modes, and frequency toggles between 100 Hz and 100 kHz in multiples of 10. To find inductance, use 100 Hz in LS or series inductance mode. This pickup is measuring 2.17 henries. Readings below 2 henries will read in millihenries, such as this other pickup reading at 1867 millihenries. To find capacitance, use 100 kHz in CP or parallel capacitance mode. This pickup measures 210 picofarads. This may not be completely accurate, but it's still a useful measurement. Check the description box in this video for more information. To find DC resistance, simply toggle to the DCR setting. This pickup measures at 5.84K. To find the resonant frequency and the resonant peak, the hardware and cables I use are as follows. Velamin PCSGU250 that comes with a USB power cord, BNC mail to BNC mail cable, banana plug to alligator clip cable, Ken Wilmot integrator that comes with a 12 volt center positive power supply, Ken Wilmot exciter coil with the leads soldered to a BNC mail cable, aluminum foil with paper on top as a work area shield, and the pickup to be tested. To solder a BNC cable to the exciter coil leads, buy a pre-made cable, cut one end off, strip the insulation, solder and heat shrink the exciter coil leads on, and wrap with electrical tape. The connections are as follows. Connect the velamin to your PC with the USB power cord. Connect the 12 volt power supply to power in on the integrator. Connect channel 1 of the velamin to output on the integrator with the BNC male-to-male -male cable. Connect the exciter coil to signal generator on the velamin. Connect the banana plug to shield on the integrator and clip the alligator clip onto the aluminum foil. The exciter coil goes directly on top of the pole pieces for single coils and on its side between the pole pieces for humbuckers. To secure the exciter coil on top of the pickup, use a rubber band. These black mini rubber bands work perfectly. Move it around until the exciter coil is as centered as you can get it. Leaving a rubber band on the hookup wire side of the exciter coil is especially convenient. You can then use two rubber bands at once for easier balancing and much greater stability. Attach the alligator clips on the integrator to the pickup leads. For pickups without a shield connection, such as a base plate, orientation doesn't matter. For pickups with a shield connection, connect the ground wire that's soldered to the base plate to the brown or black integrator lead clip, and connect the hot wire to the red integrator lead clip. On four conductor humbuckers, twist the bare wire with one of the pickup lead wires and clip it to the brown or black lead clip. The red lead clip attaches to the hot wire. For single conductor humbuckers, clip the brown or black lead clip to the braided shield and the red lead clip to the conductor. With the cabling completed, Turn the integrator on and set it to negative 20 dB gain. The three modes are LD for loaded, NL for no load, and IT for inductance test. We'll be using the loaded mode exclusively. To install the software to use the Velamin, go to velamin.eu, search for PC Lab, then click PCSGU250. Click Downloads, and then click PCSGU250 software package to download the software. Locate the downloaded file, right-click it, and then click Extract All. Extract the files, then double-click the folder and locate PCLab2000LT.exe. Double-click to run. With PCLab open, set the amplitude to 1 or 2. 
This is purely for visibility. Click Circuit Analyzer. Then click View and select Markers F and DV. Click Options and select Automatic Voltage Scale. Then click Options again and show multiple traces. Select 5 dB under Vertical Scale. Then select 10 kHz under Frequency Range and 100 Hz under Frequency Start. Leave Log Frequency Scale checked and uncheck Log Frequency Steps. Now you're ready to make a Bode plot. But first, to stay organized, right-click anywhere on the main screen to add text. Personally, as I make my own pickups, I enter the bobbin type and coil height, turns of wire, wire gauge, magnet type, gauss strength, inductance, capacitance, and resistance. Click Add Text on Screen, then right-click again anywhere on the screen to move the text around. With that done, click Start to begin the plot. You can change the view of the plot by selecting different options under Vertical Scale and V-Range, though in most cases the standard settings will be fine. To measure the plot, line up the two horizontal sliders at the lowest and highest points of the plot, respectively. Then move the vertical slider to the highest point of the plot. The readings at the bottom of the screen will have a number for DV and a number for F, meaning decibel voltage and frequency. They're recorded as DB at F, in this case, 3.5 dB at 1.77 kHz. But there's a slight problem here. Lining up the sliders like this is not extremely accurate. For the most accuracy, go to File and Save Data. It'll export the Bode plot as a text file with the exact decibel voltage response to each test frequency. Think of it like a numerical representation of the pickup's EQ curve, while the Bode plot is a visual representation. Opening the document in Notepad, we can see Hertz, VRMS, and DBV. We're going to focus exclusively on Hertz and DBV, which are the same parameters we guesstimated with the grid markers earlier. The resonant frequency is the frequency where a medium vibrates at the highest amplitude, so simply look for the highest number under DBV, which in this case would be 10.532. That 10.532 amplitude is at 1700 Hertz, which means 1.7 kHz is our resonant frequency. To find the DB value, Simply calculate the difference between dBV at the resonant frequency and dBV at 100 Hz. In this case, 10.532 minus 7.777, which equals 2.755 dB, rounded up to 2.76 dB to keep things simple. We can now record this on the Bode plot as 2.76 dB at 1.7 kHz. This dB at F is also called the resonant peak and represents the frequency of peak amplitude as well as the amount of amplitude at that frequency. Swapping out the pickup to another model, we can run the Bode plotter again. As long as you remember to click Show Multiple Traces, the new plot will appear with a different color. You can scroll down in the text file to locate the second plot, but now that you understand the basics, we're going to do something much more efficient. Click and drag the text file into an Excel spreadsheet. A little cutting and pasting will clean things up, but the spreadsheet has a major advantage beyond just looking nice. Equalizing the dBV values to zero at the starting point of 100 Hz. To do this, right-click the dBV value at 100 Hz. Select Copy, then click one cell above the dBV column, hold, and scroll all the way down to the last number in the dBV column. Then right-click anywhere on the column and click Paste Special, then select Subtract and click OK. Above the dBV column, you'll now have the original dBV of the pickup at 100 Hz expressed as a negative number, while the entire dBV column is now normalized to a starting point of zero. The resonant peak, or dB at F, is now automatically solved for, which you can bold and highlight, and to compare the output of different pickups, you can simply calculate the difference between the numbers above the dBV column which represent each pickup's original voltage output starting point. And now, with zero as the starting point for every pickup, comparing the frequency response of multiple pickups becomes much easier. Deviations from zero are immediately understandable, while deviations from arbitrary numbers quickly become an indecipherable mess. My current understanding is that pickup frequency response is effectively an EQ profile. Positive amplitude at a particular frequency is just like pulling an EQ slider up at that particular frequency, and negative amplitude at a particular frequency is just like pulling an EQ slider down at that particular frequency. Imagine that each individual pickup is its own graphic EQ with the faders in permanently fixed positions. 
Theories and interpretations aside, a reminder is necessary. Make sure you always export the Bodhi plot data by going to File and Save Data and keep those original copies unadulterated. That exported data is your master key for organization, interpretation, and comparison, all of which you can do later at any point in time, and none of which you can do without those text files. The graphic Bodhi plots can always be rebuilt by going to File and Open Data and opening the text file. You can even copy and paste the text from multiple Bodhi plots into a single text file to compare multiple pickups tested at different times, or even cut and paste the zeroed out plots from a spreadsheet back into a text file and load that as a graphic Bodhi plot. Whether you decide to use only Bodhi plots, only spreadsheets, or both, make sure you keep those exported data files in a well-organized location. With the software out of the way, there's one final note on the hardware. Those BNC cables are very inflexible and can make setting everything up cleanly pretty difficult. I cut mine at either end and spliced on some 28 gauge hookup wire, which is far more flexible and user friendly, and it has not affected my Bodhi plot results at all. It just makes everything a lot easier. And that is the entire process for testing some of the most critical constituents of a pickup's tone. If you thought this video was fascinating, be sure to check out my video showing my complete step-by-step -step process for building a single coil pickup from the ground up. That video, like many of my others, is packed with footage and information you're not going to find anywhere else. So hit that like button and help motivate me to continue making content like this. I always appreciate it. And stay tuned for more Guitar Everything, right here on GuitarMD.